This is a so-called zombie deer, which is sick with a chronic wasting disease. Here is a child from Papua New Guinea showing symptoms of Kuru. The mad cow disease. And fatal familial insomnia. The cause for these diseases is well known, but it's not a parasite or a protozoa, neither is it a bacterium or even a virus. I introduce to you a prion, which is actually just a protein. By this time we've probably heard a million times that viruses are not exactly living things. They're sort of a bunch of proteins stuck around a DNA or an RNA molecule, but a prion, it's even more simple than that. It's literally just a single protein. That's it. No DNA, no RNA, but it can still reproduce. How? Let's find that out. But first, we'll have to look at the process of making a protein in our body. An instruction is taken from the DNA, and the amino acids will be assembled together in a strict order to make a chain. The chain then folds together, and sometimes a bunch of other newly folded chains group with it to form a functional protein. Briefly speaking, that's it. And it may seem like it all happens by itself, but in fact it's a very delicate and strictly controlled process. And that's because the final protein needs to have a very specific structure. Therefore, its folding is closely watched by the proteins known as chaperones. These guys make sure that the new protein folds properly, and if not, they help it out. But sometimes, there is no helping it. And before the misfolded protein causes any trouble, it will be sent to another type of protein, known as the protease, which will break it back down into harmless amino acids. And this process keeps happening in every single cell of our body, over and over, with all sorts of proteins being formed from all sorts of genes, until we encounter a very special one. This gene is called PRNP, or otherwise the prion protein gene. It is found in our genomes naturally, and is especially active in the central nervous system, where it produces the prion protein. In its natural form, it's written as PRPC, and its functions are not exactly clear. Although it's known that it resides in the cellular membrane, and it might be involved with copper ion transport. Shortly speaking, it's harmless, and necessary for a healthy functioning. So, now it's PRNP's turn to be translated into a protein. The amino acids are assembling, uh, wait, that's not right. Okay, we can still fix it. Or not. Fine, I guess this goes to trash. But this is where we get our problem. This protein has folded in such a way that it has an extremely stable form, and even the protease cannot destroy it. And this is not our native and helpful PRPC anymore, but instead we get its possessed cousin, known as PRP res, which stands for resistant or we can just simply call it a prion. And the fact that it cannot be destroyed is just half of the problem. The other half is that the freely roaming prion now finds healthy prion proteins and somehow converts them into prions. I say somehow because the process is super unclear, and both of the existing theories are still very incomplete. So with our weird zombie protein on the loose going around converting all the others into itself, the cell starts to suspect something. And in cases like these, our cells typically don't fool around, and before they can cause any trouble, they just destroy themselves, in a process known as programmed cell death or apoptosis. So it destroys itself and all the other proteins, right? Right, all the other proteins will be successfully digested by proteases. Oh, wait. Yeah, this happens. They survive. And now they're in the extracellular space which means that they can go on and infect new cells. Cool, nice job. And this whole thing happens in our nervous tissues, like, you know, the brain, which over time gets a bunch of cavities where the now dead neurons used to be, and starts to look like a sponge. And this is where the disease gets its name from, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, or TC for short. It can progress over the course of decades and results in changes in personality, psychiatric problems, problems with coordination, muscle twitches, insomnia, memory loss, and anything else really that has to do with brain getting holes in it. We've already figured out that in most cases, at least nowadays, you can get the disease due to spontaneous mutations. However, there are some other ways. 
like touching diseased animals, for example, or eating their meat, even well-cooked meat. Thing is, prions are so stable in their structure that you can't destroy them by boiling with ethanol or even radiation, which is the case for normal proteins, bacteria or viruses, but you can destroy them at temperatures above 134 degrees Celsius, concentrated alkali or near 100% concentrated chlorine which are pretty extreme measures of disinfection, I must say. But if a prion gets inside of your body, that's it. There is no way out of it. Not a single component within us can destroy it. There is no cure and it's poorly understood. So when it happens, the prion somehow slowly makes it to the brain and even more slowly starts decomposing it cell by cell. Yep, and that's about it. Proteins are pretty amazing, aren't they? But on the bright side, when this gets better researched in a few years, hopefully I can make a new video with some good news. But for now, I'm just gonna go have a steak.